Jessica could never have predicted how her career would create such a cavernous divide between her and Ryan. When they had first married eight years ago, the spark between them burned so bright, both emotionally and physically. Their passionate love seemed inextinguishable. But a thousand little brush fires of resentment and loneliness had slowly smothered that flame over recent years. The more Jessica traveled for her marketing job, the more an invisible wall erected itself between them. What had once been a united team started feeling like separate camps, each lacking sympathy for the other's daily stresses and arid stretches without intimacy. Jessica's suitcases came to symbolize her physical and emotional distance. Whenever she rolled one out to the foyer, Ryan's jaw would tighten imperceptibly, bracing for yet another stint as a temporary bachelor while his wife whined and dined clients. Some nights, lying alone in their king-sized mattress, the distance between them yawned so vastly that Ryan wondered if calling it a marriage was farcical anymore. He stopped trying to touch or seduce Jessica, fearing her perpetual jet lag or preoccupation with upcoming presentations. Jessica felt starved for Ryan's affection, but reasoned that deprivation was simply the price of her ambition. The space between their two bodies in bed grew as cavernous as the distances she traveled, until one lapse in judgment split them asunder completely. That godforsaken work dinner in Chicago should never have involved alcohol. But after smoozing potential clients for three endlessly grueling days, the whole marketing team needed to let off some steam. Jessica threw back a few too many glasses of Cabernet, her professionalism dissolving with each ruby pour. Across the table, her co-worker Mark's eyes smoldered in a way she'd never noticed before. His gaze drunk her in like a lascivious secret. As colleagues tipsily dispersed into taxes, Jessica and Mark clung to the bar stools, engaged in murmured confidences and the electric thrill of flirtation. Before rational thought could intercede, they were recklessly undressing in Mark's hotel room, pawing at each other like horny teenagers. Any trumpet of conscience was muffled by pulsing desire and poor impulse control. For one sweaty, frenzied night, Jessica cast aside her marital vows like cheap baubles, chasing carnal bliss with a virtual stranger. Morning's unforgiving light slapped her with instant regret as she laid beside the slumbering Mark sneaking from his bed in mortified silence. Jessica's mind whirlpooled with self-disgust and panic over her inexcusable indiscretion. Falling to cradling her face in shaking hands, she wept in the shadowed alcove of the bathroom. How could one rashed, drunken mistake who penned her entire world so horrifically? The agonizing flight home was a brutal descent into shame for Jessica. She nursed a bottomless glass of red wine to quell the churning guilt and self-loathing that set her nerves ablaze. Her sinful lapse haunted every crevice of her mind, manifesting as a pernicious superbug she couldn't quarantine. How could she have betrayed the sacred vows she'd sworn to her best friend, her soulmate, her loving husband Ryan? The enormity of her failing as a wife suffocated her. By the time she dragged her lidden feet across the arrival's terminal, Jessica's makeup was ruined by hours of furtive, remorseful tears. She ached to seek sanctuary in Ryan's tender embrace, but the thought withered in the miasma of her infidelity. He deserved utter truth, no matter how eviscerating. So with quivering lips, she confessed the sordid details that night, collapsing into wretched sobs on the bedroom floor, while Ryan's stricken face melted in abject betrayal. I'm so sorry, Ryan. I was weak and disgusting, but I swear it was only once, and it'll never happen again. Jessica blubbered in desperate, snot-stained pleas for absolution. She prostrated at his feet, bathing them in showers of contrition. If only Ryan could see past her egregious mistake and grant mercy, perhaps their marriage could be salvaged until Ryan's wounding silence stretched eternally and Jessica tasted the first sour truth, some sins are unforgivable. In the aftermath of Jessica's gut-wrenching confession, Ryan's world detonated into scorching particles of anguish and disbelief. 
the woman he loved more than breath itself, the mother of his children, his life partner, had violated the core tenets of their marriage vows. His wife's infidelity burrowed into his psyche like a vile, parasitic invader, poisoning every cherished memory and unraveling the very fabric of their union. Turmoil detonated within him, a seismic blast of chaos that fractured his reality. Wave after riptide wave of fury crashed through Ryan, drowning him in a torrent of unrelenting rage. Imagining Jessica's intoxicated body entangled with another man triggered explosions of searing disgust behind his eyes. He recoiled from her seeking touch, shoving her away as if her caress were doused in acid. An overwhelming need for vengeance darkened his vision, singing away all remnants of the adoring husband he once was. Retribution beckoned to him, a siren's cry in the squall. As surely as Jessica's sin corrupted her, so too did Ryan's thirst for vengeance contort him into an unrecognizable force, a mastermind intent on orchestrating her utter debasement. Shrouded in a roiling veil of fury, he vowed his wretched wife would experience the same emotional evisceration she'd inflicted upon him. With sinister calculation, a sadistic plan to dismantle Jessica's psyche took insidious root in Ryan's chattered soul. Their marriage had mutated into a sadistic game, and he intended to decimate her by merciless rules of his making. Ryan's vengeance campaign commenced with a silent striking of the first somber note, a dissonant harbinger of the psychological warfare to come. As Jessica flitted about the kitchen preparing dinner, a glint of gold in her peripheral vision triggered a reflexive check of her husband's hand. There, on his bare ring finger where his wedding band once rested, the tanned indentation she traced a thousand times over mocked her with its barren emptiness. A lurch of dismay plunged through Jessica's core. Her eyes billowed wide as they flicked up to study Ryan's face, searching for an explanation but he continued scrolling through his phone with studied nonchalance, pretending he didn't notice her stricken ashen pallor. An icy vampire had deposited its seed of dread behind Jessica's breastbone, one that would fester and grow with each further mindfuck until her sanity was but a slipstream in its wake. As dinnertime lapsed into an agonizing silence, Jessica couldn't resist giving furtive glances at Ryan's naked ring finger. Panic ballooned with each visual reminder that her husband was symbolically disavowing their marriage piece by piece. Was this the first pebble in an avalanche of cruelties to punish her indiscretion? Her fork wobbled in a tremulous hand, uselessly pushing food around her plate as her appetite shriveled. Jessica recognized Ryan's power play for what it truly was a malevolent gambit to unravel her sanity through exquisitely devised torment. The poisonous seed planted by Ryan's missing wedding band soon blossomed into a twisted, thorny vine, its barbs shredding Jessica's peace of mind. With increasing frequency, Ryan would return home well after the boys were tucked in bed, handsomely dressed in crisp button-downs and slacks. His hair would still be gelled, a musky cologne trailing in his wake, obvious indicators he was coming from being out on the town rather than working late. No matter how Jessica pursued him with pointed questions about his whereabouts and who he was rent espousing with, Ryan's responses were maddeningly evasive. Just having drinks with some colleagues, he'd mutter through pursed lips, avoiding her probing gaze as he shrugged off his dress shoes. The more Jessica demanded truthful answers, the more petulantly Ryan dug in like a mule child, steadfastly guarding whatever sordid secrets he was keeping. The grueling tango of Ryan's infidelity charade escalated weakly until Jessica's imagination ran feverish with scenarios of her husband's calloused payback. Surely he'd found some ripe young thing to sow his wild oats with, a clicked office mistress who stroked more than his ego on sleazebag business trips. Perhaps Ryan was even impregnating his cut-rate fling, propagating his legacy far from Jessica's tainted womb. Her tortured mind reeled at every creaking footfall up the driveway, 
bracing for the dagger of bald-faced confirmed treachery to strike her guttered heart anew. As Jessica's frenzied paranoia spiraled over Ryan's shady behavior, he was covertly escalating their mind games to unprecedented levels of treachery. With cool detachment, he installed hidden surveillance cameras throughout their home when she was away running errands. The tiny lenses went utterly undetected, nestled on bookshelves, camouflaged in vine jackets, even mounted inside smoke detectors. Soon their entire residence was his own personal panopticon, leaving no nook or cranny's privacy inviolate. From his encrypted laptop, Ryan could toggle between the video feeds with chilling voyeurism, monitoring Jessica's every move and facial tick in real time. He drank in the raw footage greedily, analyzing her body language and speech patterns for any hint of residual guilt or infidelity like a mastermind profiler. Sometimes he would record her most intimate moments, showering, dressing, languid evenings on the couch, picking morosely at her food, to forensically deconstruct later, shredding her humanity frame by sordid frame. In the sanctity of his home office, Ryan would lose himself for hours scrutinizing replays of Jessica's obliviousness to his surveillance. The tiniest micro-expressions, missed by her conscious self, ballooned into obscene significance in his calculations. That furtive scratch behind her ear when the mailman came, a guilt tell over an imagined flirtation. The nervous rakes of her fingers through her hair while gabbing with the cashier, subconsciously grooming herself for strangers approving male gazes. Ryan's eyes grew hooded and feverish, scoring the tawdry fantasies conjured by each video cage, warping his suspicions into vicious recrimination against his wife's fidelity. The incessant clatter of hammers and power tools reverberated through the house each night like a taunting metronome. No matter how late the hour, Ryan could be found sequestered in the dank, subterranean depths of their basement, stoking the conspiracy theories festering in Jessica's beleaguered psyche. What clandestine renovations was her vengeful husband undertaking down there in his lair, tucked from her sight? Sometimes the racket would continue well past midnight, rending any possibility of restful sleep from Jessica's tormented mind. She tossed and turned in their marital bed, plagued by visions of Ryan converting their basement into a private suite, complete with kitchen, bedroom, even its own entrance for discreetly ushering a maiden down there. As his banishing her from the main house to make way for a younger, spryer replacement, the paranoia hissed through her like a riptide, dragging Jessica into deeper trenches of despair and dread. On nights when the darkness strangled her with its opacity, Jessica would tiptoe downstairs and hover outside the basement door, pressing her ear against its cool steel. She could discern indistinct echoes of Ryan's grunts, mingling with the shriek of a power saw, sinister symphonic strains taunting her profound loneliness. Her hands would flutter to the doorknob, twisting it furtively in the hopes it was unlocked so she could unravel its damning secrets but the door remained impenetrably shut, fortified by Ryan's vicious machinations to fray her sanity thread by intolerable thread. The arrival of the nanny was a merciless escalation in Ryan's crusade to dismantle his wife's mental well-being. Jessica recoiled upon opening the front door to the young, overly bubbly code, her tanned, tawed physique poured into skin-tight leggings and a midriff-bearing crop top. Clearly, this Lolita had been hired for prurient motives beyond just childcare. Ryan's ploy to inject a blatant temptation into their home, a supple lamia to slither past Jessica's defenses, was as transparent as it was sadistic. Wow, you must be the infamous Mrs. Bradley. The nanny trilled in a gratingly perky tone, raking her hooker spackled eyes up and down Jessica's frumpy sweatpants and ponytail. No wonder Mr. Bradley wanted me around. You've really let yourself go while he's at the office providing for this family. Her sugary words dripped with condescension, denigrating Jessica's value as a homemaker and mate with searing preciseness. From that moment, the nanny became Jessica's personal torquemada, ruthlessly torturing her for Ryan's acclaim. 
she would maliciously undermine Jessica's authority with the boys through kicked puppy countenances and subtle manipulations. Or she'd indolently lounge about in her underwear, as if oblivious to Jessica's seething presence, while live-streaming fitness model workouts that showcased her gym-honed body in vile detail. Each sadistic violation chipped away at Jessica's dignity and psyche, until her husband's cruelly intended point was driven home. She was disposable, easily replaced by a younger, hotter model without a tarnished past. Ryan's vengeance had metastasized into total psychological decimation. The inescapable strain of Ryan's psychological torment constricted around Jessica's soul like the ever-tightening coils of a merciless python. His monstrous games had steadily whittled her down to a husk, paranoid jittery, reduced to feral obsessions over his fidelity or lack thereof. In the insomniac hours, she clawed at her hair and hissed Ryan's name like a profane mantra, hoping to exorcise his sadistic grip over her fracturing psyche. How much more debasement could she possibly withstand before the jagged shards splintered her sanity beyond repair? Then one fateful afternoon, as Jessica robotically folded the boy's laundered clothes with methodical monotony, her hand plunged into a trouser pocket and retrieved a crumpled receipt. It bore the watermarked insignia of a clothing boutique, along with a suspiciously expensive total printed in bold numerals. Expensive lingerie, judging by the descriptor tags, but lingerie in a size much too petite for Jessica's voluptuous proportions. White-hot realization seared through her, confirming her worst nightmares of Ryan's infidelity were indeed manifest. The world calcified into unhurried crystalline fragments as Jessica stared down at the damning receipt, its incriminating numbers blurring through a film of stupefied, heartbroken tears. Every shred of her husband's needling contempt, his path of psychological devastation, had capitalized into this one exquisitely timed detail to obliterate her remaining reserves of trust and self-worth. As the fabric softener fumes swirled around her, Jessica felt consciousness fracturing like a backhanded slap, appending her into a cascading vortex of infinite despair from which not even Ryan's most unspeakable machinations could revive her. Jessica's tears cascaded in racking sobs, her body convulsing as if struggling against dogmatic iron chains. When Ryan rushed in to discover the cause of her emotional cataclysm, she could only mutely brandish the crumpled boutique receipt aloft like a white flag of utter defeat. An infinitesimal smirk played across the hardened ridges of his mouth before he wrenched it away with stentorian authority. You think this scratched piece of paper represents infidelity on my part? A acid beat of laughter escaped Ryan's throat as he tossed the receipt aside with cruel nonchalance. Baby, I haven't even begun dishing out the vengeance your profligate cheating deserves. This, he grabbed a fistful of Jessica's hair, wrenching her face mere inches from his as spittle flecked his bared teeth. This purchase lingerie was simply another instrument in my meticulously calculated torment a tantalizing prop to shred what little remained of your sanity and dignity after I was through with you. With those sardonic words, the velvet shroud concealing Ryan's Machiavellian schemes tattered away in one horrifying instant. He unsparingly delineated the extent of his premeditated, purposeful erosion of Jessica's mental well-being. The hidden cameras, the seductive nanny parading her nudity like a lingerie model, even the ruckus renovations to the basement that portended transforming it into a sequestered love den. All part of an elaborately orchestrated, sadistic agenda to psychologically dismantle his wife in the wake of her indiscretion. As the shocking revelations rained down in blistering rhetoric, Jessica shriveled beneath the sleeting verbiage like a tender sapling bowing before a trooping hurricane. The Bradley household hung suspended in the miasmic atmosphere of sheer atrocia, provoked by Ryan's horrifying admissions. What remained of their marriage dangled gossamer thin, twisting wildly in the malevolent winds of anguish and retribution, now gusting unrestrained through its core. 
as the reverberations of Ryan's elaborately choreographed mindfuckery continued convulsing Jessica's fragile psyche. Both partners stood petrified before the precipice of finality. With nowhere left to retreat except into divorce's uncompromising storm shelters, a faint glimmer of logic penetrated the roiling thunderheads of Jessica's devastation. If there remained any faint hopes of salvaging their union from this toxic maelstrom, it would require engaging the sternest sciential observers to arbitrate, and possibly to perform crisis triage. Her body inert as a shed carapace, Jessica mumbled a strangled plea to her husband about seeking emergency couples, counseling before they withered into irreversible homicidal malice. Through therapy's hyper-focused lens, perhaps the professional intercessors could meticulously illuminate the hairline faults cleaving through the Bradley's astonished bedrock. Could their mishapen lacerations, Ryan's near-sociopathic retaliation, and Jessica's reckless infidelity, be mended via microfracture surgery before devolving into the festering, gangrenous equivalent of amputation? Or was the prognosis more dire, demanding they sever all bromatic connections and limp ineluctably towards declaration of emotional death? These lingering alternatives rested precariously in the scalpel calloused hands of whichever consecrated counselors they desperately invade to firehose their domestic armaged and unfolding. The road to reconstructing the Bradley marriage from its thermobaric rubble began with a sojourn into the barred heart of darkness from whence the original sins emanated. In the sterile sanctuary of the therapist's office, scalpel sharp questioning lanced the pustulous truth Jessica's drunken, transient infidelity had indeed been deplorable. But it paled in comparison to Ryan's meticulously orchestrated, psychological torture campaign to annihilate his wife's spirit in retribution. As Jessica emotively relived that sordid business trip dalliance, her pained recollections mirrored the very depths her self-respect plummeted to in that fever of reckless abandon. She wretched candid remorse and wailed pleas for her husband's forgiveness like a bankrupted gambler at a merciless loan shark's feet. Ryan, however, remained stoic and indrawn throughout her entreaties, his calcified heart still reverberating with the primal urge to utterly decimate his marital backstabber. Even the seasoned therapist's expertise strained to unpick the malign skeins of dishonor and vengeance now inculcated into the Bradley sacred union. How could the seething, sociopathic cataclysm of Ryan's mind games possibly be parsed and exercised in tandem with Jessica's initial selfish turpitude? Rebuilding the foundation of basic spousal trust from such a mutually annihilated bedrock would be tantamount to spiritual triage, triaging the nuked vestiges of a ravaged marriage back to fecund life through hyperbolic, metaphysical resuscitation. Looming over the Bradley's marital immolation like a solemn specter was the innocent embodiment of what had once constituted their sanctified unity, their two young sons. Though mercifully shielded from the scorched psychological battleground their parents had formed, the collateral existential fallout threatened to profoundly scar the boy's delicate psyches. For each session, the therapist extracted Ryan and Jessica's anguished confessions, like necrotic roots from a poisoned soil. Their prevailing question remained, how to quarantine the fragile seedlings from this blight until rejuvenation was possible. Any implosion of the family structure, however justifiable, risked inflicting traumatic shrapnel few children could metabolize unscathed. A divorce's splinter aftermath harbored insidious poltergusts, abandonment anxiety, identity dissonance, withering senses of security and self-worth. Ryan and Jessica's atomic Armageddon must be entombed beneath radiant pretenses of reassuring normalcy, lest it metastasize into internalized demons far more virulent than even their transgressions could fester. So in the aired sanctuary of the therapist's chambers, the Bradleys strained to engineer a trage protocol for stabilizing the familial bedrock until reconstructive surgery could commence. Jessica's inviolable promise to retreat to the loathed nanny's territory, a Spartan guest suite where she could privately cauterize her deepest lacerations. 
Ryan's oath to maintain a paternal homestead of seamless domesticity, banishing all sacramental anguish from his son's periphery. Though rotted to the foundations, the facade of an unbreached household must calcify over the gaping wounds, at least until their children could be evacuated from the false-out radius of their progenitor's unholy war. As the Bradleys persisted in this soul flaying process of systemic marital triage, an existential question loomed ever larger before them, one which which their consecrated therapist could only illuminate, not prophecy. Could the charred, irradiated territory of their union ever be renovated into a verdant, fecund paradise, once more through steadfast forgiveness, or had the drawn protraction of their individual atrocities permanently salted the earth, rendering it infertile for the green shoots of redemption to flourish, Ryan, seethed at the very notion of exonerating Jessica's carnal betrayal through the esoteric alchemy of spousal absolution. With each session's unbandaging of his inflicted torments, fresh geysers of vitriol spewed from his crippled heart, scalding imagery of his wife's wanton unfaithfulness rekindling like a gasoline pyre. Forgiveness fell antithetical to the barbarous reprisals he'd exacted in retribution, a fool's buy for the eternally irreparable. His path forward narrowed to a single dance macabre, finalizing divorce's ritualistic severance before his shredded soul withered completely. Yet Jessica still clung tremulantly to the hollow-bodied revenant of their former intimacies, driven by a stubborn hope for conjuring the necrosis of trust back to opalescent shine. With the therapist's mystical assistance, could the putrid revelations poisoning their bond be neutralized through a purging regimen of draconian penance? Perhaps once the malignant emotional parasites were exorcised, a clean slating ceremony of redemptive vulnerability might remint their union into a tempered, diamond-bright talisman. The roads to finality or forgiveness both glared essily ahead, their termini obscured by the miasmic fog of perpetual strife. Only the Bradleys' withering perseverance would ultimately decide which face to trudge.